So unit seven is integration. And we're looking at 7.1 today, which is basic integration and U substitution. And that's on pages 351 to 367 in your text. Our curriculum outcome, to demonstrate understanding of indefinite and definite integration by site and by substitution as used in the fundamental theorem of calculus. And our lesson objectives, number one, to learn what integration is, number two, to be able to integrate by site, and number three, to be able to integrate by substitution. So far this year, we've learned what a, the derivative was, and we found out that the derivative was the slope of a line tangent to a curve at a specific point. And this unit is dedicated to the opposite of finding the derivative, which is called integration. And sometimes we, you might see this called uh, the antiderivative. Graphically, this is finding the area under the graph of f of x. So instead of finding the slope of a tangent line, we're actually finding the area under the graph of f of x. But we'll get, that, get into that a little bit later on in the unit. The symbol we use for integration is this. It looks like a really tall, skinny s. It means integration. So our first method is integration by sight, just by looking at it. So this is the most ba basic way to integrate. You have to think to yourself, what was this function before I took the derivative of it? And the good thing is you can always check your answer by taking the derivative of it. So examples, find the integral of the following functions. So the first one is uh, the integral of 4x cubed plus 6x minus 10. Don't worry about this dx. Um, that's just saying that the variables that we're talking about are x's. Um, so 4x cubed plus 6x minus 10. So we need to think, okay, what was 4x cubed before it became 4x cubed? So we know that using the, the power rule, um, that the exponent um, that it should be, should be x to the fourth. Because remember when we use the power rule, rule, we subtract one from the exponent. That's a big thing. So if I take the derivative of x to the fourth, I get 4x cubed, and there, there it is. Now this next one, because it's 6x, it should have been an x squared. So if this was x squared, and when I ended up taking the derivative of it, I ended up with 6x, that means there should have been a 3 in front here. Because when I take the derivative of it, I bring the 2 down and multiply by 3, that's how I get my 6. Now, when you have a constant, that's pretty easy, because that means you only had an x term, because when you take the derivative of x, you just get 1. And then there could have been a constant here. So we usually write in a plus c at the end, because there could have been any constant here, because when you take the derivative of a constant, you get a 0. So here is your integral. Again, you can double check it by taking the derivative. x to the fourth would be the derivative of that is 4x cubed. 3x squared, the derivative of that is 3 times 2, which is 6x, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, uh, minus 10x plus c. So our second one here is a little bit harder. We have some fractional exponents, which is not cool, but we have to be able to integrate those as well. So I think to myself, okay, what was the exponent on the x before I took the derivative of it? And it should have been, because um, we subtract 1 from the exponent, it should be 1 higher. So that would be x to the power of 7 over 4. So this next part's a little tricky, because we need to figure out this is a 6 now, but what was it before? So when I take the derivative of it, I take 7 quarters and I move it in front. And then it's going to be multiplied by something. I'm just going to call that a for now. And then that should give me an answer of 6. So all I have to do is just solve for this value of a that I created. So if I do that, I get 4 uh, times 6, which is 24, and divided by 7. So that means the number in front was 24 over 7. And the more you do this, the, the easier it becomes. Now for the second one, I have x to the power of negative 2 thirds. It means if I add 1 to that thing, I will have x to the power of 1 third. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I brought that 1 third down in front, and I multiplied it by something. And in the end, I got an answer of 12. So if I multiply both sides by 3, that means that something was 36. So I get 36x to the power of 1 third and plus c. So if you go about it um, in a logical manner, so make sure you know what your exponent should have been, or used to be, I guess. And that's if you add 1 to the current exponents. And then you can sort of reason out what those numbers in front would be. Don't forget that the, whenever you take the derivative of a constant, it's 0. So we always put this uh, plus c at the end, just in case because um, uh, there could have been any sort of constant there. It could have been like a 5 or a 100 or a pi or anything. So our second method for integration is integration by substitution. So substitution allows us to find the integral of functions that we use the chain rule to find the derivative of. And so this is sort of the opposite of the chain rule. And you should try these following steps. 
Number one, you're going to assign u to whatever's in the brackets with the exponent. And so I have an example right here, so we're going to do that. We're going to call u 2x minus 7. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative implicitly, and we're going to solve for dx. So if we take the derivative of this thing, if we say du dx equals, this would just be a 2. Now we need to solve for dx, so I'm going to move the dx over to the right-hand side. So I get du equaling 2 dx, and I'm going to solve for dx. So that means I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so I end up getting a half du equaling dx. And that's important. Number three, we're going to substitute for u and for dx. So um, up in this original integral, I am going to put in, instead of uh, 2x minus 7, I'm going to put in a u. And instead of the dx, I'm going to put in the half du. And now I'm going to like, now I'm taking the integral of something that doesn't have like a binomial inside brackets. I just have a u, and that's a lot easier easier sorry to take the integral of. Um, now we're going to integrate. So when we have a half here, we can just move that out in front. And now I'm going to take the integral of u to the 30. Well, I know that that should be to the 31, so that means out in front I had a uh, 1 over 31 and I end up with u to the power of 31. I can double check that integration if I were to take the deriv derivative of this, sorry, I'd move the 31 out in front and then I get 31 over 31 which gives me nothing which is exactly what I had and then I subtract 1 from the exponent it gives me 31. And number 5, replace your u. So now I have, I might as well multiply these two things together, I have 1 over 62 u, we said, was 2x minus 7. 2x minus 7 to the power of 30. And we have now u substitution to integrate. So it's a basic uh, set of steps, but it allows you to get rid of this binomial inside and end up with um, something that's a lot easier to, to work with. So here's a couple examples. It says use substitution to integrate the following. Number one, we're going to take the integral of x times 2x squared plus 5 to the power of 7 dx. Now, we're going to make that substitution again for the thing inside the brackets with the exponent. So we're going to say u is equal to 2x squared plus 5. Now we're going to take the derivative of it. So du over dx equals 4x. And now we're going to solve for dx. But when I, when I look up above in this equation, I see that I have an x and a dx. So instead of just solving for dx, I'm going to solve for x dx because then I can make that substitution. So what's going to happen is I'm going to write this as du equals 4x dx. And then I'm going to move just the 4. So I get x dx equaling a quarter du. Now my next step is to plug in this quarter du instead of x dx. And I'm going to plug in u instead of 2x squared plus 5. So I actually get the integral of, uh, instead of 2x squared plus 5, I get u to the power of 7 and then times a quarter du. And so I've gotten rid of that x and that dx and the thing inside the brackets. And now I'm, I have something that's much easier to work with when I'm integrating. So this quarter is just a constant that stays out front. When I integrate u to the seventh, that means the exponent was eight. So that means I had a one eighth out in front, u to the power of eight. And because when I move that eight down in front, when I take the derivative of it, if I were to move the eight down, it would cancel out with everything here because I don't have a number in front of the u to the seven. And so this is just one over 32. u to the eight, u was two x squared plus five to the eighth power. And then we, I forgot in the example before, but you should throw in a c at the end as well because there could have been a constant here. So our second example is a little bit harder. We have a fraction, but remember that the easiest way to work with fractions is to write them as negative exponents. So that's 3x squared minus 4 to the power of negative 4. So our u substitution is still the same. We're going to take that thing that's inside the brackets. So that's 3x squared minus 4. Take the derivative of it. du over dx equals 6x. And again, I have a x and I have a dx. So what I'm going to do here is not just solve for dx, but I'm going to solve for x dx. So I end up with a uh, 1 6th du. 
So now what I'm going to do is make that substitution again. Plug in 3x squared minus 4. Instead of that, I'm going to plug in a u. And instead of the x dx, I'm going to plug in a 1 sixth du. So I end up with an integral that looks like this. I still have a 2. Instead of the x dx, I'm plugging in a 1 sixth and then a du. And I have a u to the power of negative 4. So maybe it's easier right off the bat before we integrate to take 1 third u to the negative 4 du. So I know I have a 1 third. I know that the exponent on this thing was 1 greater than negative 4, so it was negative 3. So that means out in front I have a negative 1 third u to the power of negative 3. Um, and now I can make my substitution back. So I get negative 1 ninth u happens to be 3x squared minus 4 the power of negative 3 and that plus c is your integral. Now remember you can always use a chain rule to uh, confirm that this is the derivative of, uh, sorry, that this happens to be the derivative of that and I would do that in this case and you'll see that in both cases it works out perfectly. So in summary, integration is the opposite of finding the derivative and remember that you can always check your answer by taking the derivative of your answer and you should get back to what you were integrating. Graphically, this equation represents the area under the curve of your function, f of x, but we will talk about that at a later lesson. You can either integrate by sight or by substitution, and you'll always be able to tell when you should use substitution because it's going to be a lot more complicated of a function. And so your assignment for the integration by sight, page 356, 10 to 19, 21 to 29, and on page 366 for u substitution, 2, 5, 10, 11, 14, 16 to 18, 20, 23, 24, 26, and 27. So good luck, and we'll see you in class.